Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Facebook Live. If those of you who tuned in last Saturday at 10 a.m., you know that about 15, 20 minutes into it, we started having a major glitch called static. So we've been working on the problem all this week, and I think that we have it uh, solved and resolved, hopefully. So we'll start again, and I'll give a brief introduction uh, about Dr. Leah Andrews, who is my guest uh, today. Uh, Dr. Andrews graduated from the College of William and Mary with a bachelor's degree in international studies. From there, she uh, went to Yosen University and received a master's degree in traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture. And then from there, she went to Pacific Oriental College of uh, the Pacific College of Oriental Medicine and received her doctorate in Oriental Medicine and Acupuncture. She's going to be talking tonight about a very interesting subject, is the five elements of Chinese medicine. And she's going to relate it to children and give us some ideas on, uh, by understanding our child's body type and face shape, that we can uh, better parent them and help them to uh, reach their potential and their creative potential, as well as remaining emotionally stable, which in this day and age is extremely important. Um, I met Dr. Andrews a few years ago at a conference, and I purchased her book, Seven Times a Woman, and it has since become my Bible. It's amazing, and some of the information that she's going to be talking about tonight is, um, is in the book. So I want to turn the time over to Dr. Andrews, and thank you so much for being here. We're excited to try this again, and hopefully <laughs> everything will be perfect. And you look wonderful, and I look quite and pasty. So <laughs> <laughs> take it away, Dr. Andrews. Well, thank you so much, Charlene, for having me on. And you are a beautiful, accomplished woman. And I'm so happy that I get to be on your show. Um, one of the things that is really amazing about Chinese medicine is the sense of time, where they they see time in a much longer sense than we do. It's not this instant gratification. They're looking at how can we better our lineage and our society over generations. And so from that perspective, they built up a whole system of how can we nurture and cultivate the best in our children. And part of that is to, to be able to identify how they see the world, how they take in the world, and then how we can balance them so that they can adapt as well as, they, as possible to the environment and also that they can thrive. And I think that's something that's really, those are two things that are really unique about Chinese culture, the sense of this long cultivation of, of not just tomorrow, but this generation and the next, how do we optimize that? And also how do we optimize the chances for this individual within the greater whole? And, Chinese face reading gives us a really good tool on how to do that. Chinese face reading was developed as a way to very quickly identify, first of all, if strangers, people you don't know, be able to kind of read their personality and get a, get a, a gauge on, is this someone that I can trust? Is this someone that uh, would do well working for me? Do they, does their personality style, does their way of looking at the world fit in with what I want? And with children, it helps you to see how their brains are, are best developed. So the, the first slide, please, I want to show a little bit about the five elements. We're just going to go through this quickly. The five elements are, it's, it's a mnemonic. It's not airy-fairy stuff. Basically, they are using within these five elements, it's a shorthand for a whole long list of characteristics. And these characteristics interact in certain ways. So we have the generating cycle where fire creates earth, earth creates metal, metal creates water, water creates wood, and so on. And then also the five elements keep each other in balance by controlling each other. They generate each other and they also control excesses. These are the two positive ways that the five elements interact. Next slide, please. They interact negatively when they over control or when they, the, the, um, the natural cycle goes backward and they insult each other. And we've definitely felt this in human relations when people are over controlling and stifling, it creates a lot of friction and disharmony. So we want to definitely, with our children, keep them in balance in the two positive cycles that we showed first, where we're nurturing them and then gently curbing their excesses. 
So they were keeping them in that optimal middle zone, not over, you know, over imposing our will on them and then not also not giving them insufficient boundaries where they can kind of push back on us. So that's kind of the sweet spot that we want to be in as parents. Next slide, please. So we're going to start off with the earth child. The earth child is the most harmonious body type wise. I, I made a little, little graphic to kind of give an idea. Everything is more fleshy, grounded. The legs are shorter. The face, the head shape is round. Typically the features are smaller and more localized in the center with a wider face. And there's a lot of um, groundedness in the lower part of the face. Um, tend to have thicker lips, um, a stronger jawline, um, and they're just more meaty, they're more fleshy. There's a tendency to be overweight, but even when they're not overweight, there's definitely some muscle and some, some meatiness to them. They're not lean children. Earth rules digestion, but it also rules the intellect. These are very practical children. They tend to be very moderate um, in their interactions. They like harmony. They tend towards harmony, practicality. They like routine. Routine is very important for them. They are naturally grounded children. And if they keep the same element to adulthood, which sometimes we do, sometimes we change, then they will be very grounded adults, very practical adults, tend to be good in real estate. Um, they're natural networkers. They tend to bring people together. So they're very good um, when you have networking groups or when you have a charity or within a business where you want to bring people together. So this is the, and they're going to start showing these natural tendencies in childhood by being the kids who kind of collect other children, bring kids together. Um, they're going to have that natural tendency and they want that harmony within the social group, within the family. Now, the downside with earth children they are going to worry a lot. When things are not routine, when there's change, there's a lot of worry and fretting that comes along with that. A lot of questioning and it, it becomes, they're trying to find, refine that, that balance and that groundedness. They don't do well with sudden change. So with Earth children, you're gonna to have to really work with them to when you have to change course, when things happen out of the blue and, and like, you know, if you change schools, you're gonna move, you know, any even smaller changes too to the routine, they're gonna to need to have a little bit more guidance on how to allow that transition to happen more smoothly. They are going to also physically, health-wise, they're gonna have more problems with digestion. They're gonna to tend to be overeaters, emotional eaters, Food definitely is um, the drug of choice for earth children and, and earth adults. So that is something that kind of the, the food issue tends to come up and also issues with digestion of food as well. Let me ask you a question. Um, you said that they're networkers. So yeah. does that mean that they're leaders as well or they just like to bring okay. people together? Well, so, there, so there's two types of earth. Um, I didn't know how deep we wanted to go, but there's two types of earth. There's what we call more yin, soft earth, and there's more yang, um, mountain earth. So mountain earth, like uh, the the typical, like the the stereotypical mountain earth type, is um, Winston Churchill. I would categorize, for example, um, Hillary Clinton. I would I would categorize Trump as partially also mountain earth. So, I mean, across the spectrum, there's a lot of mountain earth leadership. It's a different style. We're going to go over wood. So the two types of leaders tend to be wood or mountain earth. That's most of the politicians fall into one of those categories. That is the more dominant controlling networking. That's the young, the more, you know, controlling kind of, and that can manifest in men and women. It's not just men. Um, but that is, that is a, a person that wants to collect but also has a little bit of domin domination. Um, it can be a positive thing. It doesn't have to be a bad thing, but they want to lead. They, they, they still see, um, a mountain earth leadership still sees their constituents as their family, as people they're protecting and connecting with. So it has a different, slightly different um, perspective than a wood person. They want to bring people together, but they want to lead those people into a better future, for example. Um, 
Um, now the soft earth is going to be more like the earth mother, someone who just wants to nurture and love everybody and brings them together in that way. Um, so one is more dominant, one's um, less dominant, but still there's this collecting of people, this bringing together of people. Um, I would say that in every organization that is successful, you have to have earth people keep it being that glue that keeps the people together. Interesting. Thank you. So this is an example of an earth child. And of course, we have him eating. So it's very emblematic. But you see there's this roundness to the face. Um, the features are kind of smaller and collected in the center. Um, it looks a little bit more different in an adult. Adults typically are going to see more of like, um, like some, they tend to have more double chins or stronger jaw lines, more fleshy lips. The energy is more down here. Um, but in children, it tends to manifest more as like the roundness of the face um, and, and more of like a fleshy body, shorter legs is, a, is a, the easier way to see them. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Next is, is a very opposite body type is the metal child. So metal is very lean and very delicate looking. Usually the skin has a little bit of a sheen to it um, and they just look delicate. Um, typically you can see prominent bones, bone structure, like they tend to, um, a lot of the models, even today, but definitely the, the older generations of models tended to be very metal because they had very um, kind of, the high cheekbones and like a lot of the, the lines that look really good in photography, that those are metal qualities. And a lot of times also because metal rules the lungs, they'll have lung issues. So you'll have kind of like the asthmatic um, chest that kind of is sunken in instead of coming out, it, it kind of goes in. Um, not a lot of flesh, like so whereas earth was fleshy, metal has very little muscle tone and very little fat on their bodies. They're very lean and thin um, and tend to be longer. Um, and not only do, does metal rule the lungs in a more um, mental level, it rules the sense of individuality. So it's it's where, you know, I have my boundaries. This is where, where I start and end, and this is where you start. There's this very much of this containment and separation from the outside world. Um, so for example, a lot of metal people like to have some space. They tend to not um, want people barging into their boundaries. A lot of the tech people nowadays are metal people. It's a very good outlet for metal, uh, predominant metal types is going into technology um, where people really have their own space. There's, um, there's less social interaction that's forced upon them in their work environment. Um, and as children, they really do flock to more of these kinds of activities where they like things like ballet or they start very early wanting to work with their computers and things like that, where they can have that kind of containment and perfectionism and not really be kind of forced into um, kind of the roughness of the world. So metal, the benefits of metal are many. They are very detailed, very um, righteous in a good way, like they, they're very idealistic um, and very disciplined. So they uh, naturally can be very successful in life. Um, but what we need to do is temper the perfectionism because they can be too much, too hard on themselves. These are the kids that do not need you to be like, well, you need to get an A in school. They already feel that. They already beat themselves up when they don't perform up to their own standards. They don't need... Um, someone cracking the whip and making them go to bed and, and study and do things. They know what they need to do very quickly because they want to do well. Um, what they do need is to know when to stop and when to have fun and when and how to balance their lives a little bit. Um, they tend to be very, um, this is a an kind of an emblematic um, metal child, ballerina, perfect with her hair, perfect and everything that's, and they tend to, to, to really, um, these are the kids that you can put on their clothes in the morning and they will look not like a mess at the end of the day. <laughs> they will be able to keep their clothes clean and, and kind of contained. Um, well, I didn't have a metal child then, for sure. <laughs> well, they might are, have had a Are there boys <laughs> that are metal? No, there are boys. They're definitely, I've seen a lot of boys who are metal. The, um, the, and the thing is, it's, 
it's a lot of times we're not one thing. We are more balanced. Yes. We see when someone is more of an extreme, they really have a lot of one element, but we wouldn't be functional if we didn't have all five elements. So all mm -hmm. of them talking about, we all have those aspects, but one of them or two of them tend to be more predominant. More often you'll see two elements predominant in a person. And that gets a little bit more um, involved because then you're seeing, okay, how are those elements interacting within that person? Um, and that gets really interesting, but just to keep things simpler, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm describing people as kind of extremes right. um, of what they are. Metal children tend to have immunity issues. So they're going to have more colds, more lung issues come up, and they're also going to have um, also more skin problems, a lot of eczema and skin stuff kind of coming up. It's really common for metal children. Um, it's really important for metal kids to feel safe and connected. You're going to have to put more energy in socialization and connecting with others. <coughs> Excuse me. Not being clickish. Sometimes they'll feel comfortable in a little little group and then they don't want to go outside of it so kind of the opposite of the earth child which is this very gregarious wanting to connect everybody the metal element is more separate very interesting i'm thinking of some of my grandchildren and i can see some of this in them so go ahead you can you can see this um definitely when you like, like i said if you go to certain industries it's easy to see in adults um the people, like I said, tech industry is number one, biotech and tech engineers, um, anybody in computers tend to have more metal element. Interesting. Yes. Next slide, please. The water child is going to be, um, water is the hardest thing to see um, physically because it water takes the shape of whatever, wherever it is. So it doesn't have defined boundaries. So the water face, for example, tends to be more fleshy like the earth face, but it doesn't have a distinctive shape to it. It's kind of amorphous. You can't describe what the shape of the face is. The body is going to have more energy in the hips and the lower abdomen. So even in boys and in men, they tend to have more hips than other elements. Um, they're going to be more fleshy in the body, like the earth element, um, more fat or more muscle. There's whatever it is. There's going to be more mass to their their body. Um, the water element rules the kidneys. It rules development and it rules the will, as in willpower. So water, when it when there's issues with water, there tends to be problems with developmental stages. Um, there might be um, like early hormonal issues, for example, might be something that you find in a water child, um, either having their their um, their puberty too early or too late, for example, or even um, like uh, one of my cousins had one of um, his testicles didn't descend when he was born, for example, like early on, like not developing at certain age, at certain levels with the hormones, especially, but also with their mental development, um, not reaching certain markers at certain ages the way they're supposed to those are common things um, the good thing about water children is they tend to be incredibly imaginative and outside of the boundaries of normal thought um, so einstein is is an example of a water person someone who was completely out of the boundaries of what he was taught um, and they tend to be visionaries they tend to be very wise, even very early on as children. Um, the issue that they have with that is, again, there's no, they have trouble with structure and boundaries because their nature is to kind of flow and see this expansive world. It's very difficult for them to be on a certain track in a limited way. They're gonna feel limited by having a routine, by having to be at a certain place at a certain time, by having limits to how they can think or what they're supposed to think about that that's going to be a, a real challenge for water children they also tend to have a lot of fear a lot of phobias so um, fear of water especially is really big with water children uh, fear of the dark fear of you know whatever the, the phobias are, are an issue um, and like i said before developmental issues that's another thing that you have to watch out with with water children um, also, ear infections are really a big tendency with water children. Um, 
I would say as a parent, what would be really helpful for water children is to lovingly, kindly, but create a structure. They, they need boundaries. They need structure. They need to feel what those boundaries are. They, they're not like the wood child who's pushing against boundaries and fighting it. They just, they don't feel boundaries, so they don't know where they are. They need to be kind of taught, like, you need to get to school by eight o'clock in the morning. There's no, oh, I'm daydreaming, so I'm going to get there later. I'm not going to get my clothes on until later. You know, you, you can't daydream right now. You have to get up, put your clothes on, you know, like that type of thing. And just having the patients knowing that their brains don't work that way. It's harder for them to grasp the structure that for, for them than compared to other children. This is an example of a water child. Usually the biggest um, tell for a water child or water adult are these big dreamy eyes. The rest of the face sometimes is, it's difficult to tell because there's, he's, oh, is this an earth child? Is this, you know, some other element? But when you see those big receptive eyes, that's a real tell for water because they're just taking in the world. Um, and that's part of, I think, why there's a lot of fear too, is like when you're that open and that receptive um, and you're kind of seeing this, this expanse of the world, it can be overwhelming and scary, especially for a child. Next slide, please. Any questions or comments? I guess we, do we have any guests today? We do, but. Yes, we do have a couple of viewers. Uh, okay. No one's asked a question yet, but go okay. ahead. Okay, so wood element. This is usually the, the one that people get most excited about um, because wood, uh, it rules the liver, and it, but it also has this drive to expand outward. So they're usually the most visible when they're out of balance. They're usually the ones that are bothering people the most in the most visible way. So people usually love to, to talk about wood element. Um, so the wood element type is going to be very rectangular and upward energy moving. So the energy tends to kind of get stuck in the shoulders, tend to have broad shoulders. Um, this is in boys and girls. There's a, the energy is more focused in the upper part of the body and in the shoulders. Um, they tend to be sinewy and more muscular, um, really good muscular development, even in children. Um, not so much fat. Um, they, and if they do get overweight, they can drop weight easily. They tend to be very courageous. These are the explorers. These are the kids that are climbing trees and, and you know, really pushing their limits and their boundaries all the time. And they also tend to have a very strong constitution. So typically what you have health-wise with these kids, they usually are fine with, you know, they get over colds quickly and all that stuff. They tend to have a lot of injuries just because they're always into things. They might be exploding things. They might be, you know, running around, climbing things they shouldn't be doing, getting into fights, you know, whatever. That's where they tend to get hurt. Um, so you, you might have more broken bones and that sort of thing with a wood child. Also, emotionally, there's more anger and control issues. So um, these kids, they have a lot of passion and anger. And you really want to foster the passion part and, and teach them how to channel that anger energy into positive energy. And I've actually heard some, um, some self-help positive thinking speakers talk about, motivational speakers talk about using your anger and transforming it into something positive in your life. That is really speaking to wood people because other people really don't get that. <laughs> but wood is so charged and runs on that anger energy that it is a really good thing for them to learn how to use that as fuel for their passion. Um, so if they get really angry about, I don't know, this is unfair and they get really mad about it, well, how can you change it? Like, how can you really? you know, get, you know, do all the steps that, you know, that's hard, but you can use that passion to get all these things done so you can make things better for yourself and for other people, for example. Like, that's a way to move that energy into a positive way. And that's how it would be, tends to become very good leaders. Um, now, how, how, how would it how happen if you have a wood parent and a wood child? That gets interesting. It gets very interesting, especially if the wood parent hasn't, dealt with it, it does it isn't good at looking at themselves <laughs> and it kind of hasn't worked that hasn't worked on themselves then it, i mean that's that's what's interesting about most of us a lot of times we have children who have 
it's a lot of our same elements, which is why they drive us so crazy because we're seeing ourselves <laughs> kind of, you know, hitting up against the same issues. So um, there tends to be more of this power play when you have a wood parent and a wood child because both of them want to be in control. And so it can get, and you hope that there is another element parent in there to kind of <laughs> balance things out and then kind of play referee to that because, um, yeah, they, they do tend to kind of to, to butt heads. Um, and that, you know, if, if there's not a lot of awareness, that can get a little ugly. Well, I'm thinking of our family, and we seem to have wood, fire, and metal. Okay. And, and the fire seems to always put the wood on fire. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank heavens they're all married and gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the siblings, there's a whole other, you know, there's a, there's competition and other things that come up with, with siblings too. Oh, major that, competition. Yeah, that's beyond just the five elements, but yes. Um, so I would say that another thing that we were, we talked about before too is that with wood, it's really important to teach empathy and compassion because a lot of what teaches us compassion and empathy in life is weakness that we experience, failures. And because wood children have a stronger constitution, sometimes it's harder for them to understand why other people can't do what they do. Because both physically and emotionally, they bounce back better than others. Um, these are really good survivors. Um, so they are able to kind of put on their blinders and go forward to what they want. They don't, you know, they're okay if they, they make people angry and kind of cause chaos around them. They're going where they're going. Um, and other elements can't do it the way they can. And so they may not understand why the earth person is fretting because they like routine or why the fire person has their heart broken because someone doesn't like them. The wood person doesn't naturally have that compassion because they're like, well, I can do it. I can just go forward. And they don't realize that not everybody can. Um, so I think that's, it's, but they, if, if you can teach empathy to a wood child, you can have a really phenomenal adult, someone who is a leader, but who is compassionate and takes care of people who are weaker, someone who's a really compassionate leader. I mean, that's the best of both worlds. Sometimes so, I think that develops after, I mean, you can do a lot of different things with them, but then I think after they get married and they start having children of their own, I think yeah. some of that compassion starts coming out. I think especially for wood people, a lot of times having children is what really teaches them because there's such a strong instinct to protect your kids and you see how vulnerable they are. Um, I think that that I've seen it a lot in my friends and my patients when they have children, it's like, something really shifts in their makeup and they're really able to develop more compassion at that point. Interesting. Okay. Next slide, please. Or do you have a comment, questions? No, go ahead. I'm fine. Okay. Uh, fire element is the last one. And this is um, physically the fire body um, is more slight. There's longer legs, longer fingers, longer arms, um, and they tend to have less muscle and less fat on their bodies. But really what you'll notice is this kind of um, a lot of the energy is, is focused around the heart. The eyes tend to have a lot of like movement and sparkle to them. Um, a lot of uh, kind of triangular shape to the face. So like the heart shaped face or like a diamond shaped face. Um, a lot of like peaks like on the eyebrows or the eyes or the, the upturned nose, um, the cupid's bow. Those are and, uh, dimples are a big giveaway for fire element. Um, Fire rules the heart, um, and it rules the spirit and the mind. So fire people tend to be very creative. Um, they are very loving. Um, they, 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 it's very important for them to feel a heart connection and to feel loved by those around them. And they tend to be very charismatic. Now, these are the kids that will be singing and performing at a very early age. Um, they also really use their humor to make people feel happy around them. A lot of them um, really are hurt when people around them are hurt. They, they really are naturally empathic. They feel it. And so they want to lift everybody up. So, um, for example, a lot of comedians have a similar story where, like, there was a lot of hardship in their lives. And so, like, they would – like, Stephen Colbert talks about how he would, like – 
make his mom laugh because mom had a had a hard life and so she he would like tell jokes to make her laugh like that was one of the big motivators when he was a kid and so there's this this need to uplift those around them with entertainment so a lot of entertainers have fire um now it's not always good because that energy can be a little bit too scattered um a lot of uh, fire children have problems with attention adhd um, they can have trouble settling down at night, so they have insomnia. Um, they can stay awake anxious um, because they overfeel things. They're so sensitive to what other people are feeling around them. It's hard for them to shut that off, so they can get very anxious. Um, and then physically, they tend towards high fevers. Um, later on in life, there might be hard problems, but that usually doesn't manifest until much later on in life. Um, fire, I think we had talked about before. Fire can pair very well with wood because wood gives a little bit more power and groundedness to fire and fire lightens up wood and brings it more into its passion and fun versus its anger and control. So that in the, in, and this doesn't always happen, <laughs> especially with siblings, but it, it can be very, a very good um, relationship in terms of work relationships, creative projects, and also um, marriages and, and, and romantic relationships as well. Interesting. So those are, and this is um, an example of a fire child. Usually you'll notice that they, they tend to be messy. The hair is wild, you know, not like the, not like the, the metal child where it's all perfect and still it's like, there's a lot of movement with, with fire children. And also they, um, there's a lot of reaction to fire, fire children and fire adults feel very stifled because they like a, they like to like move outward and go here and go there and other people can get very annoyed or uneasy with that and they just want you to sit still so i think a lot of fire children get yelled at a lot and and, and told to just stop <laughs> and be still a lot that's a it's a very common thing um and it's, it's it is important because fire children do need to know how to contain themselves so i think it's a real um the challenge for parents is how do you allow them to really cultivate that creativity and that movement and also learn how to fit into society and be able to have structure and have focus in their lives. Now, I heard, too, that you can um, the class that I took on a fire child, they 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 tend to have a a strong jawline that goes down to like an upside down A. Have you found that? To, is that correct or is there's that of, not? There's a lot of triangles in their shape, face shapes. So right. like, so like, a, like, yeah. So like, um, it, it can be um, like a, a heart shape where there's more of like a pointed chin and like maybe rounder, or there might be like a pointed chin and then like also pointed this way. So, there, so like a, a diamond shape, for example, okay. um, those are very common um, fire type shapes, yes. Okay. Um, they don't have the strength in their features that wood would have. Wood ha tends to have like a strong chin, strong nose, there's like more stronger eyebrows, there's more strength to their features. Earth is and, and water are gonna be more substantial. Um, fire doesn't have that unless it's a mixed element, but they will have those um, points and especially kind of going upward and outward. Um, elf ears, like kids who have like the little pointed ears, very fire. Okay, very interesting. So that's my my presentation. I wanted to keep it short and interesting. Is there anything that people would like to know more about? I think, yeah, bring your book up. <clears throat> um, here's Leah's book. Uh, and I told you earlier that I got this at this conference that Leah was at speaking, and it's amazing. And it uh, it also includes additional information that she has gone over tonight about the five different uh, Chinese elements. Thank you, Leah. This was fabulous, extremely informative. Really enjoyed it. Uh, appreciate your time, and I particularly appreciate the fact that I know you had an extremely busy day, and that you were willing to. <laughs> redo this and uh, thankfully there was no static and so I'm grateful for that but well, thank you so much and thank you for sharing um, your expansive knowledge we really appreciate it thank you Charlene I really appreciate you thank you all right uh, goodbye everyone and thank you for joining us bye-bye